Welcome to Critical Edge. Today we're looking at 10 games of 2020. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your bell notification. If you enjoy the videos, do like it. Please leave com comments down below as well as share the video as well. Starting us off at number 10, we have those who remain slated for release on May the 15th, 2020 for all major consoles and PC. It's a first person psychological horror game that takes place in the town of Delmont, which has a heavy emphasis on night. In fact, basically most of the story takes place at night, where all these horrors come out lurking from the darkness. It has very similar gameplay elements to that of Resident Evil 7 and Silent Hill combined. It does have a bit of Soul Reaver in there with alternate dimensions of the same area which makes for a very interesting mechanic because in this instance usually what happens is you have to do different tasks in the same room but also in a different dimension meaning that you've got to switch between the two to kind of work your way through the story it seems to be a very linear experience but at the same time it also has these really dark themes to it that's very interesting it's something we haven't seen in a very long time in my opinion and it's obviously going to give horror fans exactly what they want. All I can say is for now, we cannot wait to be afraid. Moving on to number 9, we have Deliver Us the Moon, a sci-fi thriller you sent up into space as the last astronaut in humanity to find out exactly what happened on a station on the moon in which humans found a way to use the moon as a source of energy. Everything goes silent one day and you are then tasked with having to go up and investigate exactly what happened to everybody and why did all communication stop. On the moon itself you are alone with your only companion being a little robot by the name of Ace. All I can tell is for this one it's more based on exploration of the moon with a lot of anti-gravity and weightless features in it. It's definitely something which is driven more by the story than anything else and obviously you are going to have to uncover the truth of what happened which makes it one of these more intricate sci-fi thriller titles that just keeps you hanging in the edge of your seat up until the end. Also to be released on April the 24th exclusively for the PlayStation 4. Coming in at number 8, we have the Command & Conquer Remastered Collection. This has been rebuilt from the ground up. It's not just simply taking the old thing, slapping on a new look to it, and then pushing it out the door. No. They've actually gone to the extent of re-recording the original soundtrack. They've also recreated new models for the game. And you get to switch between the legacy and the new models, which can be presented in 4K 60fps. And also for new fans, it's a good way to get into the series if you haven't already picked up Command & Conquer in the past. Or if you're like me, where you've actually played the game from like Command & Conquer 3 onward, and you find it a bit difficult to go backwards with the older visuals. It's a great way for existing fans to obviously get the type of finance service they've been wanting for a very long time and the community itself has also been helping out with the development process while they've had 24 hour direct access and they've also come up with a better user interface which has been redesigned to obviously assist with making this game a lot more easier to deal with and a lot more simpler for people who are new to the series as well. Apart from that, cutscenes have been remastered from looking all blocky and choppy to now looking all smooth and edged out. It looks absolutely amazing from what we've seen and obviously the proof is in the pudding, I mean or rather the proof of the pudding is in its taste. We only get to see what it's actually like once it's released but thus far everything tells us that this is a game that's going to be remastered properly. It's not going to just be something that's just been given a fresh coat of paint and pushed out of there haphazardly. I'm just saying I'm looking forward to this one and I hope you are as well. Coming here at number 7 we have Wasteland 3 which is a long awaited sequel to the Wasteland 2 director's cut. It is to be released on August 28th 2020. It is a party based role playing game. You do have the option of playing either solo or co-op with a friend. It is a story driven experience as well. So as you progress through each mission you obviously progress in the different story arcs. The game is set in Colorado or rather a frozen version of Colorado where survival is difficult and a happy outcome is never guaranteed. Guaranteed. Wasteland 3 will feature a deep and engaging story. At the same time, it is a story driven campaign. So, whether you're playing solo or co op, the story obviously progresses regardless of who's jumping into the match itself. The cool thing about it, as well, is they are adding in player vehicles. There's some environmental dangers, as well as a revamped and more fluid action system, which has been improved from Wastelands 2 tactical turn-based combat system which is also going to be unique to Wasteland 3. For this it's definitely one of those games where you're gonna have to just hop in with a group of friends and spend countless hours. If it doesn't mean you're progressing through the story then at least progressing through each level and figuring out new ways to either get a better time or even improve on your older missions. 
Coming in at number 6 on this list, we have Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. This is a very, very long-awaited sequel that the cult fans have been dying for for a very long time. Speaking of dying, the story starts off with you as a human being dead and waking up as a vampire. So from the first day of death and onwards, you've got to figure out how to survive as a vampire. You've also got to learn the rules and the tenets that they follow. You will learn that there are obviously older and more powerful vampires than you. There's also factions inside of the city. You get to learn about your abilities as well as go on missions through what appears to be an open world action adventure setting. From what I can see thus far, the entire game looks absolutely stunning and beautiful. Obviously this is just a trailer and we only get to see what the game actually looks like when you fire up on your consoles being the PS4, Xbox One or alternatively a PC. The story itself appears to be mission based and progresses as you go along through each mission so you may get quests on the side, not too sure about that as yet. What we do know is that you have access to various different powers as a vampire. You obviously got to learn how to use this. The other rule as well that I've found very interesting is that there's different factions of vampires, meaning there could be a possibility that different vampires have different abilities and then obviously they have different rules which you are not to break. So from what I can see thus far, the game seems to have either these story driven me mechanics which you can obviously follow, at the same time certain rules which you must not break unless you find yourself in trouble. It's going to be one hell of a ride for fans of the series and also those of us who are going to be new to it. Look like we're going to get something really, really good that we'll be able to put in probably hundreds of hours into. Coming in at number 5, we have Spongebob The Battle of the Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. This is actually a remake or remaster of an old title from the PlayStation 2 era of consoles. Now it does feature a lot of characters from the main storyline such as Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy and Mr. Krabs along with Squidward, I mean it wouldn't be Spongebob without it. The levels itself is designed similar to that of Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. It appears to be an action platformer title where you can also engage in multiplayer segments. I'm not too sure how the multiplayer would work out though as to whether it's level specific or whether there's an actual multiplayer mode where it's somewhat like a battle royale between you and all the players similar to that of Crash Bash. I mean the single player does appear to be similar to that of Crash Bandicoot on its own. Apart from that, it's these types of games that actually get you going as a gamer. It's not as serious as the other ones that we've seen on this list, and it's fun to have these little quirky ones here and there. These things keep you going as a gamer, you know, taking a break from the most serious types of titles and having fun with your family on the couch, just sitting down and having a good old party game. It's nice to have it. Coming up to number 4, we have Microsoft's Flight Simulator for 2020. There isn't an official date schedule for this as yet, but as you can see from the footage, it looks absolutely real. It is insane when it comes down to the amount of detail that they put into this game. They've actually went to the extent of creating the entire world, as in recreating Earth as it is inside of the game. You can fly anywhere, you can go anywhere, you can land in these real-time or real-life locations. There's even real-time weather patterns that can be followed, real-time air traffic. You can actually put these features on and off, so even if you're not connected to the internet, it's no big deal. The, the AI can take over at certain points in time if there's been any other planes in the sky or whatever it may be. As far as it goes in terms of any simulator to date, this is going to be one of the most realistic ones you're ever going to see. From weather patterns to animal behaviors, flocks of birds, those kind of things, even all the way down to like giraffes and elephants and lions, it's everywhere is just as real as it can be. No matter where you go in this entire game, you will never lose that sense of realism. Clouds move over landscapes as if though they do in real life. No two clouds are alike. Lighting, every single thing, right down to its finest detail, is as real as it can get inside of a video game. All I can say is, Flight Simulator fans are going to have the time of their life and if you haven't used any Flight Simulator games before, now is a good time to do it. You could basically travel the world from your computer and land wherever it allows you to. You can see the pyramids, you can go through the Great Walls of China, those kind of things. It is absolutely phenomenal. The amount of detail, the amount of work they put into this is amazing and it's a good time for those of you who got a dusty old flight stick running around to pop that in and enjoy the ride. At number 3 we have Marvel's Avengers. The quality of this game seems to rival that of Insomniac Spider-Man for PS4. The story as well of the game is very interesting in the sense that it starts off with the public or rather the world loving the Avengers for who they are and what they do for them. From there the Avengers go on to a mission where everything goes horribly wrong. Captain America appears to die in the trailer and the rest of the Avengers are blamed for the death, pain and suffering 
thousands of people in the area due to the botched mission. At the end of the trailer, it appears that they were actually framed and some other sinister force behind all of this did this on purpose in order to get rid of the Avengers or to at least make the public hate them to the point where society no longer wants anything to do with them. What's more interesting is that the story itself seems to be set, or the main story itself, seems to be set in a somewhat post-Avenger world where it is basically either illegal or Avengers just aren't all that interested in doing their jobs. From there, obviously, stories unfold, and I don't want to spoil too many details for you, but all I can say is the game itself looks extremely beautiful. Each of the Avengers are actually given the powers that you've seen in the movies, and they actually do look and feel like their movie counterparts. From what I can see, though, everything about this game is obviously story-driven. We don't know what type of level design we're going to get as to whether it's going to be open world or not, but it could be mission-based. Each character as well will be able to switch between them, not really sure about that, or whether each character will have their own mission. The other thing which will be cool as well is if each character is given a different scenario in each mission, that way you can view the story from each character's own point of view. For now, all we can do is wait and speculate, but at the same time, from everything we've seen thus far, this is definitely the Avengers game that fans have been waiting and wanting for a very long time. We just hope that it delivers when it is time to do so. At number 2 we have Yakuza Like a Dragon. The story of this one takes place around a central character by the name of Ichi who takes the fall for a crime that he never committed. He gets sent into prison for 18 years. When he returns he expects to find a welcome party from the people who he took the fall for. Unfortunately this doesn't happen and instead he is betrayed and shot. Obviously left for dead, that doesn't really happen and he then goes back on a mission to find out exactly what had happened in the time that he was in prison and what is going on around him. Unlike previous Yakuza games, this one doesn't have a beat-em-up mechanic. In other words, it is actually a turn-based RPG. Very different, but it still does have those quirky side quests and those, well, ridiculous things that all Yakuza games have in it. They're just fun and never get old, it never get stale, and it's just something you can keep coming back to over and over again. I mean, I've been doing it for quite some time now, and there's been so many different versions of this game released over the past few years that, well, it doesn't even get old. No matter how much you play it, the game itself is always enjoyable. Yeah, every Yakuza title has something new to offer, and it's always something that just refreshes it, even if it's something that's repeated. As you can see right now, there's even these little quirky go-kart races that are thrown in, all kinds of side quests that can obviously keep you busy from the main story, all kinds of funny things to get into, and these are the things that really keep you going in these kind of games, you know? We don't really play Yakuza just to beat everyone up. You play it for all the silly and quirky things that you get to do as well, and it makes the experience even more enjoyable. For previous Yakuza fans and for new Yakuza fans, this is definitely going to be a game where you'll be able to get a lot of fun out of it. Maybe at least 50 hours of fun, I'm guessing, could be more, depending on how enthusiastically you want to complete every single thing it has to offer and obviously engage all of its silliness. What I can say for now though is it is definitely a game I am looking forward to playing this year and I hope that I can get my hands on it sometime soon. Finally at number 1 we have Dying Light 2. This game has been teased for a long time since E3 2018 and it does have some very interesting mechanics for my, say for myself. What's unique about this game is that every choice that you make actually affects everything that you do. Now this isn't exactly something that you haven't seen in the past before. However, it's been done in such a way to the point where you, each gamer's experience will actually be unique and different, meaning that two players can't exactly play the game out exactly the same, unless of course you somehow make the exact same choices. Each and every experience will be different, meaning that every time you replay the game, you have all these little fun side quests that you can handle differently to obviously change the outcome of the world and how it all progresses. What's interesting is the way it also unfolds. You see, your changes aren't immediate. They happen several days later and as the game progresses, more and more effects take place later on. And from there, obviously, you get to decide the type of world that you want to live in. Whether you get to live in a world that is suppressed and governed by somewhat civil soldiers who want to force some sort of authoritarian regime on its population who then resists and fights back and then you have a choice whether you're going to fight with the people or fight with the regime. Alternatively, you can obviously go against all of this, make a different choice and then invite some of the worst people to the city making it a dangerous playground during the daytime, not just the night. During the night, you obviously have the, the monsters to worry about, which is similar to the previous Dying Light enemies. I must admit though, I like the whole I Am Legend thing to it. Obviously now there's more people in the city with you, it's a bigger society, and 
bigger social system for you to somewhat maintain depending on your actions that will determine exactly how it all unfolds and the type of experience you go through as a gamer. I'm not too sure whether certain ones will make it more difficult for the player or whether it'll just be the same kind of difficulty but a different kind of story and different kind of missions that pop up here and there. Whatever it is, it is definitely going to be a game that has a lot of replay value based on these choices and obviously like I said before, each and every game's experience is going to be unique based on the options that you choose. So that alone itself means this game has tremendous value and tremendous potential for being replayed over and over each and every time and it's really something you gotta look at. I mean that's the kind of quality you'd expect from most games, how much of replay value it has after you completed it as well. You don't want to fork out sixty dollars for something which you can only play for a couple of hours and then put it down. You know, it's not always good to have that kind of practice in place.